it's pretty eye opening as of course the quickest way to destroy a society is to destroy the beauty within it and that's exactly what's happening right now well come back beautiful and amazing human beings my name's Lukardowski here of we are change.org and there's a lot of absolutely wild and absurd news to get into today as we have a story that is actually bringing the nation together as it's ever so being divided towards civil strife that is headed our way during an upcoming election that a lot of people will probably not be believing the results of as internationally our enemies are coming together more than ever but domestically, the opposite seems to be happening here as we now have some presidential debates with some very interesting stipulations as we're going to be talking about that. The larger kind of bromance between Xi Jinping plus Vladimir Putin and a lot of other fifth generational warfare that we're going to be talking about with all the latest news here on this independent media broadcast. If you like the shirt that I'm wearing, you could get it on thebestpoliticalshirts.com. And the clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast originally is from a young woman describing her reaction to Naples, Italy, where a lot of the streets look unrecognizable and are becoming more and more like the third world because... They're supposed to, as the Western world is being deliberately destroyed by many of the politicians that are selling you out to what looks like a larger death cult that, of course, profits off of your misery. That's just my opinion, as, of course, as society crumbles all around us, the central controllers, politicians, and bureaucrats look to control you that much more, not just with central bank digital currencies, a cashless society, a track, trace, and database social credit score-like system that already is being implemented in many underhanded ways. As today, we found out that the UK government literally has disinformation unit members of the authorities there that are soon going to be considered as actual employees inside of social media companies so they could have more of a direct control over what people see, hear, and are exposed to. This has just a few decades ago here under the church commission hearings, we found out that the CIA had agents inside of the top brass of the corporate media. And as the corporate media falters and is absolutely obliterated and loses more and more legitimacy as well as its viewers that are dying out, of course, the next logical step for the central controllers is to, of course, control what people see on the internet. The same central controllers that are always linked to some very nefarious, really bad activities, as now cocaine was just found at the U.S. Capitol as police officers are investigating this. Just as a few weeks ago, they failed to find out who brought cocaine into oh, the White House. As not surprisingly, a lot of online internet investigators automatically had their answer to what was going on here. As it's pretty clear, there's a lot of members of the U.S. federal government, including relatives to the top brass of the federal government, that clearly have substance abuse problems, as these are the same politicians that wage the war on drugs punishing people for the crimes that they're able to get away with every single day. As, of course, I think it's fair to say that elites love drugs. And whether it's street drugs or farmer drugs, a lot of them are hooked on it, especially with drugs like Ozempic, which has been leading to some really weird face alterations of many celebrities within Hollywood. As now scientists report that they discovered a new weight loss shot that is twice as powerful as Ozempic, as probably there are going to be a lot more side effects here. As life always has a very interesting karmic way of not allowing people to take the easy way out. As perfectly represented by many democratic liberal policies that have absolutely backfired, especially in major urban liberal areas. As today, 148 House Democrats just voted against a bill that would deport illegal immigrants who assaulted police officers. As the bill officially passed the House of Representatives, it soon will be sent to the Senate. Will it make its way into actual law? Who knows? As, of course, some Democrats want immigrants to beat up police officers and still be allowed to be here in the United States. And as politicians keep pushing ever so divisive narratives and issues on the American public that, of course, create a larger economic futile future for everyone, there's a story right now happening in Greenfield, Indiana, surrounding a 10-year-old boy who was bullied and then decided to take his own life that is actually bringing people together and making them realize, hey, maybe we shouldn't be so tough on each other. Maybe we, sh we, we shouldn't be playing into this larger divisive narrative. Maybe we shouldn't be spewing hatred towards each other. 
As now hundreds of people have gathered for the funeral of this bullied 10-year-old child, as many motorcycle groups are taking part in this larger funeral procession, as this story should definitely give us some context, some perspective to how we not only treat each other, while also considering our own actions, questioning them, and asking ourselves, are, are we fighting people online for the algorithm, for ourselves, or is it truly something that I genuinely feel and would actually say to a person's face. And if you wouldn't, you shouldn't, as of course, a lot of people are more likely to say something negative than positive online, according to a lot of mainline studies. And as an online content creator, one of the things that you could always develop that I think is essential in this field is a, a tough skin, but also a reliance on taking care of yourself and your mental health, which of course we talk about extensively on LukeUnfiltered.com as we are organizing a nature hike in Washington, D.C. in about a week from now, this upcoming Sunday that, of course, members of LukeUnfiltered.com get to be a part of. I also wanted to remind people that as members, you guys get to be callers to our live show as we're going to be doing a special live show tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern here on YouTube.com forward slash We Are Change with comedian Ben Beckus. You guys get the ability to be a part of that show by being able to call in and ask us whatever you want. We are also building out our studio, expanding it, growing it. You want to be a part of that? You want to look at the studio and say, hey, I actually was able to purchase this thing for these guys. You can, as of course, we created a little Amazon wish list with some of the items that we need to finalize this studio. Check out that Amazon wish list down in the description below. Check it out. And now you could be a part of the larger build of our podcast studio that we are investing in and working on growing, building, and expanding that now you could be a part of by checking out the link in the description below. As of course, the times are becoming more tumultuous than ever as we're finding out today from our story yesterday about the Slovakian prime minister that was targeted as a crazed man tried to take his life that he was, quote, millimeters away from death. As now medical professionals are saying, it's impossible to say if he will survive as a lone wolf assassin, quote, wanted revenge for him because he, quote, disagreed with the political election outcome in his country, highlighting dangerous civil strifes that's affecting many European countries and also the United States as well. As the interior minister of Slovakia came out and said that his country is on the edge of a civil war from political tensions within it, as, of course, this is becoming the new norm, as there was even a, a broadcaster who is now being accused of justifying this larger targeting of the Slovakian prime minister because, quote, he was a divisive populist who was, quote, very pro-Russia. This, as of course, this divide is being felt more and more in places like Holland, that just now, after six months, the political parties there have reached an agreement to actually have a local government there after a populist won that election. This, as of course, we turn... Our eyes here domestically, where Donald Trump, who is representing more of a populistic kind of leader, also is set to become the next president of the United States. And with that comes a lot of fears and concerns that a lot of left-wing Democratic establishment type individuals will, of course, not be happy about that and have their own overreaction in response to this. As, of course, our good friend Tim Pool has been warning about civil strife in this country coming our way very soon, as now what he was talking about for many years is being routinely talked about, as it's fair to say that regardless of whoever wins this upcoming presidential election, that the opposing party that loses will, of course, probably contend it. What will happen in that contention? Well, hopefully nothing. Hopefully there will be a clear path to victory and a concession and less, of course, upheaval. But how will this situation unfold? Well, who knows? As, of course, we keep getting more and more perspectives into just how biased and partisan our political establishment is. As, as now we have a new expose on a DOJ official that is uh, prompting some very questionable social media posts that clearly highlight how she is not nonpartisan. As she is, quote, urging Republicans to go blank themselves and pass on to a new life. I said that nicely. She didn't say that nicely. But these are some of the lawyers at the Department of Justice right now working with your tax-paying dollars, clearly showing here that they are extremely biased, as, of course, the current president of the United States is embroiled with a lot of problems, including, according even to the Daily Mail, financial problems 
and debts, as a lot of people aren't even purchasing his books, a lot of people aren't showing up to his ra rallies, and a lot of mainline journalists and larger institutions like CNN are even reporting critically of him when previously they were the ones that allowed him to run from his basement during the last presidential election and allowed him to become the next president of the United States. This, as the situation in the Middle East, is also providing a very precarious situation as Joe Biden was critical of Israel's policy and larger new offensive when it came to, of course, launching a campaign inside of Rafa which Joe Biden said if it was started that he would not send military weapons to Israel if they did that. Israel did do that. Biden did temporarily stop munitions and aid shipments to Israel as, of course, 24 hours since he said he would not send it if Israel launched this invasion. Joe Biden just announced that he is sending more arms and munitions to Israel and advancing a $1 billion arms deal for Israel as the prime minister of that country just came out and said that he vehemently rejects Biden's peace plan and that, quote, there's no alternative to military victory for him and his country, as this is one of the major issues that, of course, has divided the Democratic political party, as it's going to be very interesting to see the larger presidential debate between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, which Jake Tapper, a man who previously called Trump's presidency a nightmare, will somehow be moderating as the terms and conditions of this debate are pretty interesting as we're finding out that there might not be any kind of live audience members in attendance. We're finding out that people's microphones are going to be muted as it looks like the debates are going to be moderated by many Democratic aligned reporters that clearly will have a bias here. And as the United States is becoming more politically divided, other places around the world are coalescing, especially with the larger BRICS nations, and questioning American hegemony, as of course we got live updates of Vladimir Putin's trip to China, where he is meeting with Xi Jinping, as Russia has announced that its forces are advancing in an all-directional front against the Ukrainian countryside. As now in the north of Ukraine, the Russian military was able to gain some significant territory, as many people now fear a larger invasion of Sumy. This says China has a lot of business ties to Ukraine and seeing them becoming more and more aligned with the people of Russia and its political leadership absolutely does provide some larger perspectives about the shifting geopolitical power structures that are at play here, especially when it comes to this larger proxy war in Ukraine that represents the fight between the East and the West. This as British media reports are documenting how Xi and Putin are pushing for a political solution to the Ukrainian conflict as they have also announced that they are strengthening their alliance with their militaries, their space force, their nuclear weapons, and of course, economic ties, as they are expanding joint military exercises in order to bolster their security. They're coming together to oppose American missile deployments in space, as some people are reporting that this larger alliance could, quote, have a stabilizing impact on the world, as many other Western media reports are still continuing to talk about the larger clash of civilizations that could happen here, specifically describing a World War III threat to the West, as a lot of American and Russian politicians are warning about a global war and a tragedy that can affect all of humanity, especially According to the Russians, if Kiev is allowed to use U.S.-supplied weapons on Russian territory, something that the Ukrainians are desperately asking for, as they have already launched their own missiles to Russia, specifically going after their infrastructure, as hopefully these doomsday scenarios could be avoided here, as some media organizations already have interactive maps of it highlighting the alliances that will, of course, be made here. As for some people, war is a racket, and it's a profitable industry for a lot of horrible individuals that are doing everything they can in order to propel it, to grow it, to expand it, as it's predominantly independent media speaking out against it. And if you think we need to speak out against it more, which I think we desperately do, share this video with your friends and family members. It is more imperative than ever. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys actively watching and supporting this independent media organization. I got a very important walk and talk video about the two guiding principles that I have never turned my back against or faltered on on lukeunfiltered.com. 
we got another major show coming up tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern here on this channel, two-hour live podcast, all here on youtube.com forward slash we are changed. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys, and this is why. I love you guys. Stay tuned for more.